Okay, uh, I will now very briefly not talk about positioning, but uh, rather some post-processing that uh, you might be interested in doing after you are done with uh, using all those positioning tools that have been presented now. Uh, so obviously all those transformation that uh, you can do within Piper will have some impact uh, on the quality of the elements of your model and uh, often uh, this impact will be uh, negative. Uh, so some smoothing uh, might be uh, the right thing to do. Uh, you can have all numbers of issues like uh, some penetration, mild penetration issues. You can have some inverted elements. Uh, so you obviously want to get rid of that before you run your uh, FE simulation. Uh, now, before I go through the tools that we have available, I would like to stress out that uh, the philosophy of uh, Piper is uh, that after you, you do all the things you want to do, like position and uh, scale the model, in the output you should get a model that is uh, more or less the same quality as the model you put on the input. We don't strive to change uh, change the quality. So if you input uh, a good model, we would like you to get a good model in the end as well. But uh, on the other hand, don't expect that if you input some terrible model, it will come out covered in gold or something. It will, should be more or less the same. Uh, so I will mostly skip the slides and instead show you the live demo, unlike the previous presentation. So just quickly, obviously we have a tool for first visualizing the element quality. Uh, I will show you that. And uh, we have uh, a few tools for, we have a tool for um, uh, improving the quality of the 3D elements, which is uh, mainly aimed at uh, removing inverted elements. Uh, we have uh, a set of tools for uh, smoothing surfaces. And that, of course, is something you can find in all numbers of other softwares. Uh, so the implementation in Piper is uh, rather simplistic. You have just the basic tools, uh, simply because it's something you will do so often that it would be annoying to always go to a different software just to do some minor smoothing. So we have the basics uh, with some minor tweaks to improve quality of life. Uh, I will show you now in the demo. and uh, the bigger thing in the smoothing module uh, is a transformation smoothing tool which uh, should do mm, exactly that what uh, I wanted to stress on the first slide. It should improve the quality of the transformation, not necessarily the model, but of the transformation that uh, we are doing inside Piper. Uh, so, Okay, so here we are in the smoothing module, which is, uh, which is here. Uh, I have preloaded a very simple positioning of, of the child model. So first, this is uh, the tool for visualizing the element quality. There is a bunch of metrics uh, from the VTK library uh, that you can, you can select uh, and you can visualize. Uh, you can select uh, ranges. Uh, free, r free ranges for the value of the metric for each element. Here, maybe, maybe I want to decrease that to have only only negative quality elements in the first range. Compute it again. So now I see that only this part was really damaged. The other part is uh, uh, is unchanged. You can play with the colors. You can do some uh, you can do some gradients to see to see uh, like a continuous uh, changes. Uh, so this is basic stuff that you can see in all the other softwares. Maybe what you don't see that often is uh, this little thing here. Uh, again, we, want to, we are mainly interested to see what happened to the model in regards to the model we had on the input. So uh, what we have here is uh, the possibility to use relative quality, which simply means that you select uh, a model, uh, some other model than the, than the one you are currently having. So you either can uh, choose the model from history. I don't have any in the history. Uh, but maybe if you were doing, doing the positioning in one session, you still have the imported model. So you would compare your positioned model to the, to the, uh, to the initial model. Or if you don't have it in the history, you can simply load it from the file. Uh, I've already done it to save a few seconds. Uh, so now I can use relative quality. Here I guess we will see more or less the same as, uh, as the absolute quality. Uh, because, well, nothing really, nothing really 
uh, this just got planes damaged and everything else is okay. Uh, but of course, in a more complicated scenarios, uh, I think uh, this might be helpful. Uh, now, uh, another tool uh, I'll look at is, uh, I'll get out of this, um, is uh, I would like to talk about smoothing the surface uh, because very often uh, you will want to uh, you will want to use uh, maybe the skin uh, as a, as a target for some more uh, for the transformation smoothing that I will be uh, talking about in a second. So first, uh, you would like to get a, at a good-looking skin or like a reasonable one to so just d remove artifacts like this. Uh, so we noticed that those artifacts are really m most of the time kind of the same. You get these kind of uh, crease type. Uh, things uh, around the joints. So here is a very simple tool to automatically detect these kind of creases so that uh, you can smooth the mesh just uh, just there. So here again you uh, you choose the baseline model before the deformation so that you can compare uh, where where the damage happened. Uh, I am interested just in the uh, just in the left uh, arm so I will select only this so that it doesn't have to process anything. Uh, I'll press compute quality, and if I zoom in, zoom in uh, you will see that uh, the nodes w on the damaged parts of the mesh uh, got uh, selected. This, uh, this green ball, so uh, this is how we uh, notify selected, uh, selected points. And the reason why you want them selected is then you can go to this smooth surface uh, tool. Uh, which has this little checkbox that says smooth only selected. So it allows you to apply the, the, this implements a basic smoothing algorithm, but it allows you to apply this smoothing just to the selected nodes. So again, I want just the, uh, you can also restrict it to just uh, some entities. Uh, I will smooth the surface and um, you will see that here the quality uh, or the mesh got smoothed but uh, the rest of the arm remained unchanged because you probably like it this way. Uh, so uh, this is the tool for smoothing the surface and uh, uh, the probably the most interesting tool here is the transformation smoothing, uh, which uh, uh, what it basically does is uh, that you you select uh, some portion of the of the mesh that you want to uh, want to smooth. So here is a here is our picking tools. Uh, I will draw some box around the uh, around the damaged part, and the transformation smoothing will then uh, process only things that are inside this box. And uh, the way it processes them is that uh, here you select which uh, entities you want to use as a uh, target for creaking. Because uh, what we do for smoothing the transformation is we apply creaking to the, uh, to the damaged parts. So basically you have your initial mesh and uh, from the initial mesh we take the source points of the selected entities. Uh, in this restricted area. From the current mesh, which was uh, damaged by the positioning, we take uh, also the same points, which uh, we take their coordinates, and that will be our target. And then we do creaking uh, of uh, ba based on those points. So most often you want to select uh, the bones and the skin and basically improve the quality of the flesh uh, between it because the positioning methods will usually give you a good target for the bones and a reasonable tar target for the skin. And most often the problem really lies in, the, in those flesh nodes, uh, or I mean the flesh elements. Uh, so I will not show you any live demo about that because after me there will be Kara uh, walking you through some real application uh, of this, so she will do that for me. Uh, I have just some uh, just some pictures of uh, tests we did uh, before. Uh, this is uh, these are uh, on the top. There, this is a this is a section through uh, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulder, yes, thank you. Uh, which uh, undergone some uh, pretty large deformation. I think it was like 45 degrees. 
so on the left you see what came out from the pre-positioning uh, pre uh, simulation. So you can just, just with your eyes, you can see that something is not right. And after applying the transformation smoothing, uh, we got something uh, that looks much better. And this model actually, after applying the smoothing, was actually runnable uh, in a LSDyna simulation. Here, a similar example for the child. Uh, this is for the knee flexion that Anise was using uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, so, except for some reason, it's the other way around. Here is after after the positioning, and here it is after the smoothing. Um, <laughs> because, yes. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Carol will now walk you through some uh, real application of positioning and this with smoothing as well.